Hello, welcome to part one of Color Mixer. This is the first of an actual, like, let's program. So previously there was the overview. So this is the first actual episode. Uh, and what I want to make today, uh, or begin making today, we'll see, is a, uh, a simple program for mixing colors. Now, the way that this is going to work is kind of um, not an alpha channel mixing, but kind of a bipart. Uh, mixing. So we'll see that in a second. And as I already said, I started up the project, I call it Color Mixer, and I gave it an icon, which is kind of like two blues and a red, and it doesn't actually work at icon size, but oh well! That's okay. So the first thing I want to do is come over here uh, to text under properties, and this field determines what shows up there. Uh, and now I want this to say Color Mixer. Okay, cool. Um, now I haven't like pre-planned this or anything, but I've thought some about what I want to do with it. And the first thing that I kind of want to do is make a new control. So I'm gonna come over here to my project. So solutions have projects inside of them. Uh, and these kind of, because you can have multiple projects and then they kind of make a thing. Um, uh, user control. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to make this a um, color control. Sure, that works. Um, okay, so this is our color control. Now, there is a color dialog, which would be very similar to, like, um, if you... And we'll, we'll use it, actually, so you'll, you'll see it later. But what I want here is I want something a little bit um, more general. So let's go over to our toolbox. I want panel. Where are you panel? It's under containers. Okay, I want a panel. I'm going to call this preview. And let's see. I need. Where is my file? Okay. X3D. Actually, the way that I'm going to do this, well, we'll see how this works. Um, I might need to make. A, something called a double buffered panel. Uh, so the way rendering works in programs is it draws to something called a buffer. Um, and if you double buffer it, you basically double buffering gets rid of flickering problems. Uh, it's an option that you can click on. Actually, if you see over here um, in this control, double buffered is an option right here. Um, this takes more memory but removes flickering. So the default panel is not double buffered. Um, I don't know if you can edit that in code. We're about to go into the code anyway. Um, let's see. I go preview dot... Nope, just double click stuff. So um, I do want to go preview... Paint is an event that gets raised when this thing draws. Um, thanks thing. And uh, so basically when it's told to draw something, it will call this function and do the things that, I, that it does here. Um, so graphics is the thing that we draw. So the first thing I want to do is clear this. Uh, let's clear it to black. And then I'm going to make a const int uh, square size of 10. You'll see why in just a second. And then, um, okay. So I want, let's see. What's the best way of setting this up? I'm going to set it up this way because it's going to be a little bit better. Um, decimal r. Um, yeah, I should make this public. Get set. I'm going to need more of these. So, um, colors in graphics, at least the way I'm I usually work with them, in, are in RGBA. Um, red, green, blue, and alpha. So alpha is transparency. Now, normally when you're kind of mixing stuff, you would probably use uh, transparency. But uh, here... We're going to work on it in this way. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do actually is these are going to be um, 
Actually, I should just comment. Uh, red zero two five. Um, green zero. So here I'm adding a comment. This will show up. Um, sorry, it's very hard to think and type or to speak and type at the same time. Um, wow, that's not how you spell alpha at all. I don't know why it's alpha either, by the way. But it, that's your transparency channel. Um, now normally you'd kind of like blend with alpha, but I'm blending uh, in a different way. It'll become uh, apparent in a bit when I actually do it. Okay, so uh, so yeah, when I do it like that, and when I go, when I uh, type in R, and, like it should be able to display more information. But anyway, um, so those will be more useful in a sec. What I want to do now is actually I. Think think I want a text box the hex code of the color I want a um some numeric up downs and this is alphabetical so I shouldn't be having this much trouble finding what are you doing up there much trouble finding them okay this should go 0 to 255 Let's call this one R. This can be much narrower. Um, actually, leave a little bit of space between them. Okay, that'll probably work. E and A. Let's see, do I have anything else that I need? Um, move this. Okay. Labels. Time for some labels. This one's going to say R. And this is why I wanted a little bit of base there. Let's sidle this over. Um, whoops. I do not need uh, yeah. Might have uh, nope. Nope. Okay. We will ignore that that exists. Actually, we don't really want this here, so we delete, we build, it's like, hey, where's your thing? Uh, right here, cool. Normally you don't jump into this spot because it's the designer, but if you want to get rid of an auto-generated thing like that, you can do it there. Now this builds correctly, huzzah, the world is happy. Um, this one we want to read G. And then this one is going to be B, and this one's going to be A. Well, fairly straightforward. Um, G, B, A, cool. I want this to be centered more like that. Um, and then I want another label. This R, G, B, A. X and we're gonna put it in front of here. Okay. So uh cool. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna flush out these properties because they can have more stuff in them. And this should be return r dot value. You can see why I wanted to uh simplify it a bit. Um it actually can probably be on a line like that. Set is going to be a little bit more complicated because I want if um, value is less than zero, r dot value equals zero. If value is greater than two fifty five, um, r dot value equal two fifty five. Uh, else, let's throw some else's in here. Um, 
r dot value equals value, and then I need to let's make a function called void update x text. Yeah, and we're gonna add update hex text here. Okay, so what I'm doing is this whole thing is uh, called when you say like r equals three, it will assign the value of three. Uh, you can't see me physically pointing with my finger. That's silly. It'll this line will assign three to it because it is neither less than zero nor greater than two fifty five, and then it'll update the hexadecimal text. Um, which is important. That's what we want the uh, the thing to do. Um, let's see here. Yeah, okay. So the next thing that I want to do is apply this to all of these things inside. So I'm going to just do the copy and paste method of getting stuff done. Okay, F. Um, control A selects all text. Control K, Control F formats the selected text. Um, so I did that to kind of get things set up the right way. Now, this is important. Update your copy pastes. There are so many bugs that come about when people forget to update their copy and pastes. I know because I forget to update my copy pastes and then I get angry at myself because I have made bugs. Um, so don't procrastinate on updating copy paste because that will come back to bite you horribly and it will make life miserable. All right. Where are we on time? 12 minutes. Cool. Okay. So update hex text. Um, this should, let's see, hexcode.text. Now, normally hexadecimals start with an OX, but um, what you see with this sometimes is starting with a pound symbol. I'm not going to start it with anything. I'm just going to say this equals uh, r dot two string and zero. I th Ooh. Um, this is why we have this here. Handy dandy MSDN. Uh, and we're going to look up numeric format strings C sharp except sharp instead of three. Um, here we go. Okay. Because I need to have this give me hexadecimal, which I think is X. Okay. I want, yeah, okay. I want X2. X2. Um, g dot two string x two plus because I said this was RGBA, so let's make sure we actually do that. Um, b dot two string x two plus a dot two string x two. So what the two is, if I read that thing correctly, is it's what we call padding. It will make sure it's a, a, at least two characters, two digits. If it's not, um, so that means if it's zero digits or one digit, it will be two digits. And if it's more than that, it will be more than that. But um, because this goes zero to 255, uh, hexadecimal will end at that. Hexadecimal, by the way, is base 16. Um, I went over why it is useful in the uh, overview. So those should be links to below. Uh, I don't know exactly where. The brief is that it lines up really nicely with bytes. Uh, which is handy. Okay, now, square size. Right, I talked about that earlier. Okay, so this doesn't actually need to here. So I'm gonna do if A um, is greater than, no, is less than 255, um, then we need to do this else e dot whoop graphics dot clear color dot from ARGB 
And I want int whoop, r int g int b. And then I want to go to the front because this does it with a leading alpha. Okay. So this is kind of actually here's what I'm gonna do. This is this is something that you'll see come up. I want color our color equals actually, you know what? This is a good time to make public color get color return this okay because that's the color that we want to get so our color we get color this is something that happens in programming we're like you know i should really move this out here you know what? i should really move this out further um because i need to be able to access this so gets the color contained in this thing um the color cool Okay, take a second to breathe. So what we're doing down here is we're uh, getting our color. If we have transparency, then we want to um, indicate that with a checkerboard background. Otherwise we can just render our color. Okay, so this is really important. Um, there's no reason to waste time drawing a checkerboard background if you just have the color to draw. So I'm not doing it. Uh, so there's two things I want to do here then. I want to do, um, sorry, I poked the microphone while rubbing my nose. Um, Let's see, four and let's see, x equals zero. X is less than here. Let's see, I want a solid. Oh, no, wait, I bet I, I just have one of those lying around. Sorry, I'm thinking through multiple things at once. Okay, so x is less than um, preview dot client size dot x, no, width. It's called width. Uh, uh, let's see, x plus equals square size. Um, and then for int y equals, so this is something you're going to see come up a lot where height, um, where you'll do a nested for loop like this to kind of, what this is going to basically do is it's going to draw columns, um, going sideways. Uh, so one of the things that I actually want to do here that's really important is I actually don't want to start y at zero because this is right now what I'm writing code wise. And let me just finish the draw statement, but um, fill rectangle. Uh, so this is going to be, let's see brushes dot white that's why i didn't need to do that um x y uh and then just whoop that's intelligent whoop all right this square size square size you have to make sure not to do things wrong with intelligence so what this is going to do right now is this code is going to draw columns of white squares, but there's not going to be any spaces in them. Uh, remember, we made the background black. Um, the problem with this is doing this will make everything white because we don't leave any gaps. So what we need to do here is have this plus equals square size times two because we basically want to draw every other square, right? So this is going to say skip us a square if I'm understanding what I'm doing correctly, which I think I am. And we'll find out, we'll find out. Uh, this is a lot of programming without seeing results, but 
we'll get to the results in a bit. Now, right now what this is going to do is not actually what we want. It's going to, um, basically it's going to render bars because it's going to start Y at the same spot every time. It's going to start at the top. Um, zero is, is at the top and positive goes down. So, uh, so upper left is zero, zero, lower right is uh, width height for uh, anyone who cares. So this is not going to do what we want because this is going to render white bars, not a checkerboard. So what we want to do here is um, x mod, that's not mod, that's and, x mod 2 times square size. So what this is going to say is basically when we're going to divide x by 2 and take the remainder. So that's going to be either 0 or 1 because either it's an even number or an odd number. When it's an even number, we get zero, which means that this equation right here is going to be zero. However, uh, when x is odd, such as one or three or five, you're going to get a remainder of one, in which case one times square size is square size. So that's gonna start it at 10. So that should give us every other is down a bit. Uh, knowing your algebra and your math is really, really helpful. Uh, most programming doesn't need a whole lot beyond algebra, but really knowing your algebra helps a lot. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is actually draw our color. Um, so this is draw a checkerboard. Um, starting with black background. Um, and then there's actually another way that you could have done this as well. Um, instead of drawing the, uh, filling the back with black and then drawing white squares, you could have alternated drawing white squares and black squares, but um, this might be, this is probably faster because uh, doing a, a solid fill like that is pretty quick. Um, and then I'm not drawing every square, I'm drawing every other, so. Draw white squares. Draw our actual, actually, our actual color. Uh, fill rectangle. Now here, um, actually, it's a really good idea if I go solid brush, brush equal new, um, our color, uh, brush, and then I need uh, Rectangle, no, uh, I need zero, zero, point, or no, not client size, uh, preview, whoops, Telesense doesn't work if you misspell it horribly, um, client size dot width, client size, by the way, is the render area, so you saw the border that we put on it, um, I'll get to it in just a second. But basically, uh, that border cuts into the renderable area. Um, it's a good idea to dispose of your brushes when you're done, so you're not uh, letting that kind of float around as long. So if you look at this control, you'll see it has this shadow along here, along here. That's going to affect client size, um, the shadow is. So client size is like, actually is um, client Client rectangle. Okay, this is actually probably better to use. So I'm going to come in here, uh, and I'm going to just replace this line with client rectangle. Uh, that's shorter and whatnot. Um, okay. So the other thing that I need to do, this is a, I'm bundling some functionality because I know setting those Actually, you know what? No, let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. Um, yeah, okay. I like doing things a slightly different way. So let's come down here um, and go private void um, update rendered color. Object sender, event args e. We don't care about those, but we need them for the uh, arguments for the uh, for the thing to work. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to 
go preview.invalidate. This forces it to redraw that guy. So what we want to do is we want to come in here and we're going to take this guy and we're going to go r uh, dot value changed plus equals this. So what this is going to do is whenever the value of r, g, b, or a, because I'm going to add those, gets changed, it automatically knows to redraw our color. Um, so some very slight inefficiency in that it will call it to like redraw between like each change if we're changing all of them. We could potentially add stuff to solve it, but it's not going to be such a huge deal that I'm worried about it right now. Um, there. Nice comment on what that's doing. Okay. So now we've got this guy right here. Um, and I want to add some more functionality, but first let's just test this. So we can come down here and we can take our color control and we can put it in here. And now if we go ahead and test this program, it will take a moment to pop up because that's how it works. Let's see. Okay. Uh, yep. Yep. It's loading. Oh, oh, something's exploding. Maybe it's, oh, right here, this exploded. Why did this explode? So this is called an exception. Da, 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 da. Um, okay, I know why this exploded. I know why this exploded. This exploded because these are not ints. These are decimals, and decimals don't. Okay, so we need to cast these to ints first. That's fine. I can, I can handle doing that. Uh, do, 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 do. Again, copy paste. Secrets of programming, folks. Lots and lots of copy and paste to save keystrokes. Programmers are inherently lazy people. That's why they want to get computers to do everything for them. Um, it just turns out the computers are really, really bad at being cooperative. Okay, so clearly I've done something wrong with my render. Um, okay, let's give ourselves a more useful alpha, like 128. Uh, something about these numeric updowns is you have to actually click the little arrow to change it, or you have to, um, what's the word? You have to uh, hit enter. Uh, so if I make this 128, now that's kind of reddish. If I bring this all the way up to 255, you can see it's uh, solid. Um, the other thing that I'm noticing is this is not updating properly. Uh, I think I know why. Because changing these does not update this, right? Because I'm changing them directly. So that's something that I'm going to need to fix. So this is part of the process of programming. Um, but you can see as I increase green, it changes th that color. I can decrease my alpha. Okay. Um, that flickering that you're seeing is the, the thing that double buffering would help fix, but I don't feel like that's a huge problem. Um, and like maxed alpha, it kind of gets rid of it entirely. So we can fix that by making a um, an, a special user control that has double buffered turned on, but it's basically a panel. Um, I'm not going to worry about that, but if you want to, you can. So I need to update hex text right here because I'm adding this here. It's really super redundant for me to do it inside these because it's going to be changing those values. Um, so just give me a second to get rid of the extra update hex text calls. And let's see if we can figure out why this is not behaving properly. Let's see, x mod two times square size. So, oh, x isn't counting by one. Mm, yeah, this is, okay, so this is the problem. Um, that makes sense. Okay, if x was counting by one, this would work. x is not counting by one, ergo it doesn't. 
So I'm going to make another variable that I'm just going to call int i because I'm lazy. Int i equals zero. And I'm just going to put um, whoop, lowercase i two and then um, plus plus i. Okay, that should fix that problem. Um, what next? Well, let's just check. Let's just check. There we go. There's our checkerboard. Right, we've got a successful checkerboard. Um, now our hexadecimal display is being correctly updated as we adjust our colors. Uh, the scroll wheel does work on these, by the way, so that's what I'm doing right now. Okay, so let's see. It might be worth it to get to fix that flicker. Is it worth it to fix that flicker? I think it might be worth it. Um, but I'm looking at time, and we are out of time. So uh, this is a good start. We've gotten ourselves a lovely little color controller, partially done. Um, things to add. I want to add the ability to bring up the standard issue dialog for color when you double like this, I think, double click. Easy enough to add. Um, I think I might replace this with a double buffered panel, and I want to get it so that way when you hit enter on this control right here, it uh, allows you to be able to set the value through, excuse me, through uh, specifying hexadecimal code here. So those are uh, the next things that I want to add. Uh, until then, take care, everyone. Bye-bye.